Some games you're up against drones, and some games you're up against the chess master. I mean, figuratively speaking. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, five open world games with incredible enemy AI. Starting off with number five, it is Shadow of Mordor. Here's an open world game where the AI system is front and center. One of the biggest parts of the game is the Nemesis system, which generates unique enemy orcs for you to deal with, who all have their own personalities and quirks. As you progress through the game, they either raise up the ranks of Sauron's army, this is a Lord of the Rings game, keep in mind, or die and get replaced by a new orc. Each orc, which remember are mostly randomly generated, have special names and titles that explain their characteristics. Their looks can change based on their attributes, like which rank they are, possibly how they've been defeated in the past. Like if you defeat an orc by attacking it with a swarm of bees, it'll come back with its head covered in stings, or you can cut an orc's head off, and sometimes it'll even return with its head stitched back on. Stuff like that. What makes all this more complicated is that the various orcs don't just form an antagonistic relationship with the hero of the game, Talion. They also have their own rivalries with other orcs. That means they're more likely to fight than help each other, but on the other hand, you can get orcs who are blood brothers and allies. They might start showing up to hunt you down together, and if you kill one, then the other may seek revenge. At first, a lot of this stuff is only in the background. It doesn't really matter a whole lot, but once you get the ability to dominate or mind control orcs, wading in and taking advantage of the various personalities of orcs can work in your favor. When they're not patrolling certain areas or actively hunting you, orcs are often going off on their own missions. And it's possible to influence things to either help or hinder an orc on a mission. Helping an orc can lead to them going up in the rank, and another way they can increase in power is by, well, killing you. Yeah, every time an orc kills you, they increase in power sometimes even making them go up in rank. And of course, they don't forget what happened, and if you encounter them again, they happily gloat about how they've already beaten you once already. Basically, there's a ton going on with the Nemesis system in Shadow of Mordor, and they refined it further in Shadow of War. Sometimes as a player, you might not see a lot of this in action unless you really take the time to engage with it, but there's some really interesting stuff going on, and you'll see it if you do. At number four is Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Like Shadow of Mordor, Metal Gear Solid V contains a unique gameplay mechanic that plays a big role in how the AI reacts to your actions. It's called the Revenge System, or simply Enemy Preparedness, and it's a system where enemies will respond to Snake's actions with new defenses. At its most basic level, this system will see enemies respond to Snake shooting soldiers in the head by putting on helmets, or if you sneak into enemy bases at night a lot, they will start wearing night vision goggles, a lot of stuff along those lines. It sounds pretty simple, but the whole thing is actually a lot more complicated than you might first think, with a lot of different possible triggers that cause enemies to react to things very differently. There's some particularly clever stuff, like if enemies discover comrades that have been tranquilized a lot, instead of just waking them up, they'll start calling for an alert as well as waking them up. Or if you snipe enemies from long range, eventually enemies will respond by stationing snipers at various bases in the world. There's a lot of these, like, if you're caught using the Fulton system a lot, you know, the balloons that you can use to steal enemy resources and capture soldiers. Instead of just being shocked when they see someone get ballooned up, soldiers will start trying to shoot them down. This doesn't just involve direct stuff like that either. If you mostly complete missions by stealthily eliminating enemies, then the enemies will respond by making it more difficult to sneak. Like, they'll start installing cameras in certain bases. At higher levels of response, they'll put down mines. And they'll start putting gun cameras cameras instead of regular security cameras eventually as well. Let's be clear here, MGS5 doesn't have the best enemy AI in the world or anything. There's a ton of videos of people exploiting the AI, basically just to run circles around them. What it does have are these systems in place so that enemies can respond to the player's actions in ways that feel organic, and there's enough variety in there that it's possible they can surprise you. The first time you see soldiers equipping flashlights at night in response to your actions, it feels like you're dealing with a clever enemy, even if the AI can sometimes be best described as forgiving. At number three is Stalker. Here's another game that doesn't have the best AI, but what it does have is atmosphere. The enemies feel smart, even if they're sometimes shown not to be. For one thing, stealth in this game is hard. It is not forgiving like in MGS5. If enemies even catch a sniff of you, they will go on alert, they will surround you, and most likely blow you away. Combat encounters in this game are incredibly tense, 
and that's partially because of how AI enemies will intentionally team up on you. This on its own isn't revolutionary, but when you combine it with the A-Life system, it makes the world feel a lot more alive. Yep, this is another game with a special system. In this game, A-Life refers to how the developers created their AI to make the world feel more alive. It's less about simply creating entertaining combat encounters and more about making the world of Stalker feel more like a real place where things are happening that you're not a direct part of. Reddit users offer some examples of this system in action. Scott Pohl talks about how you can hear gunfire in the distance, but in this game's case, it's not just some background noise, it's actually something going on somewhere in the map. Sometimes bandits and other stalkers will wander around the world and get attacked by monsters. Sometimes they'll survive and make the area easy for you to pass through. Sometimes they'll all be killed and there will be a monster hiding somewhere nearby. Galaga Marine mentions that you can find dogs eating dead bodies, and you can watch bloodsuckers drag around dead bodies from a distance. Although if you do that, you're weird. I'm joking, it's a game and it's made for that. Just sounds like a weird thing though. There are other interesting things that can happen that you might never notice. Like according to this dzone.com article, it's possible for bandits who survive an encounter to leave and join up with other bandit groups. It's also possible to heal a wounded bandit, which will make them non hostile. It's sometimes simple stuff, but rarely things you see in open world games, even today. Apparently, the whole thing was a lot more complicated before release, but the developers were forced to scrap a lot of it because it was just too system intensive for computers at the time. Like I said at the top, the individual level AI and stalker can be unimpressive to say the least to a lot of people, but the way the developers used AI to make their world feel more reactive is still to this day an impressive achievement. At number two is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Part of what makes The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild feel so fresh and unique is the fact that it takes a game series that's been known for being fairly rigid and turning it into a reactive playground where it feels like almost anything can happen. And a big part of this is clever AI, AI that will often surprise you. Some notable things enemies will do is stuff like intentionally set their weapons on fire to make them more damaging when fighting you or throwing rocks at you when their weapon breaks. Because this is Nintendo we're talking about, they're pretty tight-lipped about how their systems work. There's no big GDC conference video we can check out to get a full rundown on all this, so we're mostly looking at people's experiences with the different things they've seen happen in the game. Like this gif posted by Marissa Sama, showing an enemy Moblin kicking a bomb back after Link throws it at him. People also mention that Moblins will avoid explosions as well, depending on their range. Sometimes they just run around the blast zone if it's more convenient. But it's not just the AI being smart, sometimes dumb AI can be really immersive too. Like the fact Moblins will pick up things and throw them without thinking, and sometimes completely blow up their allies. While the characters in the game are being dumb, it's actually smart AI. It's programmed to be more lifelike, interesting, and immerse you. Another example is this part, as mentioned by Nintendo Glitch on Reddit. It's possible to chase away these two guards in the desert by luring an enemy over to them. They might even fall down, which is something rarely seen in the game. These types of events in which non-player characters basically present this interesting situation is part of what makes this game so damn immersive. There are tons of examples of different things going on with the AI in this game, and it just goes to show how AI doesn't have to be brilliant to still be a lot of fun. It's better described as being adaptive. The enemies don't have to be smart, they have to be realistic doesn't just run at you and swing its sword, enemies actually respond to your attacks, sometimes in ways that if they happened in real life we would deem unintelligent. And sometimes it's pretty funny to be completely clear. And at number one is Red Dead Redemption 2. When it comes to unique encounters and creating a world that feels active and alive, RDR2 is basically unmatched. The amount of little random events and scenes that you can encounter in the open world is huge, as well as the variety of things that can happen. It also expands on the living world concept from GTA V. Because RDR2 is set in the Wild West, there aren't as many NPCs as GTA V, it allowed Rockstar to add more detail and life to each of the people you can possibly encounter. Counter. NPCs have daily routines, some more elaborate than others, but pretty much all of them save quest characters who just stand in one place waiting for you to show up will do something with their time. NPCs also respond to you differently depending on your appearance, 
and any prior encounters you've had with them and your notoriety. If you're wanted, for example, town folk will respond to you differently than if you're not. Same if you're covered in mud or if you're not wearing any clothes. Another interesting wrinkle to the AI is how they adapt to your situation, as illustrated by this article by TheGamer.com. The AI can actually catch itself making a mistake and fix it mid-scene, like with this sequence where they're supposed to dump a body in the swamp. If they screw up and it doesn't actually go in the water, they'll pick up the body and try again. But let's also bring up the wildlife. They have also got their own AI. They react differently depending on the situation. Deer avoid wolves, wolves avoid bears, and everything generally avoids you, to offer a simple example. There are so many unique AI things that can happen in this game. If you're particularly notorious, music might stop when you enter a saloon, or random thugs might try to pick a fight with you. There's unique interactions when you're dealing with people in town versus on the road versus out in the sticks, and the AI just responds accordingly. The actual combat Bad AI is fairly basic, but the world AI, much like Stalker, is incredibly good. And in this way, the game feels like a real successor to what the game was trying to do, but at a much more complex and larger scale. Basically, RDR2 takes the AI of open world games to the next level. Like we said, the standard combat AI isn't really that impressive, but that almost seems to be by design, because all the underlying stuff going on in the world is just absolutely impressive. That's all for today. What do you think? Leave us a comment, let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.